передайте тут. Crank 
crank. At the front. You go to the front and you crank the car to get it to start. <laughs> That's all she could afford. <laughs> Another picture of St. Hill. It and um, this is the castle, St. Hill Manor. The story with the castle, Ron wanted to expand St. Hill because then too many students were coming in, there wasn't enough food. Yeah, it was in the manor and the outer ramp here, the mm -hmm. here. When I arrived, people were co auditing at the tennis courts, in the bathroom, anywhere, in the woods. The city of East Princeton said he could not build, though he owns the land. But they found an old law that any man can build a castle on his land. So he built a castle. In um, 1966, Ron was in South Africa. When he, this is when he came back. Everyone at St. Hill, we got into buses and we went to the airport to meet him. Hundreds of people. Mary Sue? Students coming from the castle on break. Nothing fancy. Like today, big buildings? No. I did not like that. He felt Scientology could be delivered anywhere. Just keep the walls clean. Suzette, Diana, Arthur, Quinton. Ron in Rhodesia with his staff. Ron, my mother, my father. New Year's 1967. This, this is outside the chapel at St. Hill. When Ron was talking, there was not enough room in the chapel. So the overflow were at the windows trying to hear. After Rhodesia and Ron was an undesired alien in England, he purchased the Diana. Real. Her name is later changed to Diana. And that's, um, sorry, that's Mary Sue and it, uh, Avon River. This was the second ship purchased for the sea organization. And in 1967, my mother became crew on the Avon River, leaving us in England with our father. She joined the Sea Org with the promise that her children can follow. After they cleaned up the Avon River, Duck. different pictures of Ron. There wasn't enough room with just the Enchanter and the Avon River, so the Royal Scotsman was purchased. In my book, I tell stories of how it was purchased and how it was delivered and uh, then trying to go to different countries and um, the ship was not um, following codes so it couldn't go into certain ports. Oh, it, the ship was not up to safety regulations mm -hmm. and so it was not supposed to leave England but he did and then he wasn't allowed to go into certain ports because he violated and left England. This was the Royal Scotland during World War II with um, British sailors. In my book, I, I lay out the different decks of the ship for a better understanding when I talk about going places. Uh. Ron, that was the bridge. And that was Ron talking to one of the pilots to take us into harbor. Captain Bill. This, this is where it's like the map of the sea. Cleaning. This is the flying bridge. 
if you look out, and you look out to see, to make sure we don't hit other ships, in one of our storms, the lookout tied herself to the rail mm -hmm. so she wouldn't get washed over. This is Ron's office before uh, he moved into it. And that's how it looked. I used to sit here. And glass doors. His desk was like here, so we could see from here to here. And if he needed us, he would call messenger. This is just a hallway. <coughs> this is a cabin. Not the cabin. <coughs> Sorry. This is um, B dead forward. B. Mm -hmm. Dining room. Forward part of the ship. <coughs> In um, 1969, we changed the name from Royal Scotsman to Apollo. There's Ron and Mary Sue at a crew party. Vixie, Mary Sue's dog. People used to say that if Vixie barked at you, you were out ethics. <laughs> she barked at everyone. There's Ron, Leon Steinberg, Hannah Eltringham. Eltringham. Ron and Diana. Ron and Hannah sailing off to Mission Into Time. This is where Ron, um, from his order team, would say he would draw maps of certain parts of Greece and Italy, doing recall, whole track recall of where he had buried treasures or, or whatever. And missionaries would row ashore and go and search for artifacts where Ron said to look. And one of the missionaries today still has a coin she found. The galley kitchen. The Apollo and Athena. The Royal Scotsman we changed to Apollo. Avon River, we changed to Athena. Enchanter was changed to Diana. My brother on the Avon River. My father. We did, uh, a lot of people on the ship didn't know about ships. We had a few hair rising incidences that Ron assigned the ship liability. So we had to learn about the ship and do ship drills. So we were in Spain, and we were gonna go rowing, row the boats, and we put down three boats, and a storm came up. We couldn't row back to the ship. We got washed ashore. We had no money, no passports, no food. So the police came, and we were under arrest for illegally being in Spain. That's me. The locals brought us some water. That's me, Joan Robertson, Captain Bill's wife. And they brought us some crackers. We played hopscotch and leaping frog because we had nothing else to do. I went up these stairs. A policeman with a rifle marched me and my friend all the way back down. And he me. And then we finally 
They said they were going to take us back to the ship and they put us on a fishing boat. The storm was so bad we couldn't get onto the ship. We couldn't jump from the fishing boat to the Apollo. And on that fishing boat was the first time I got seasick. <laughs> on her foot. That's me. Now we're going back. We spent the night in a closed restaurant on the floor. You, you also, uh, in Spain, when we were stuck on land, yes, uh, at gunpoint, yes, we had nowhere to go, yes. So they put us in a closed restaurant Clo to keep us contained. Mary Sue, she, the she was the captain. She's watching us come back. That's me, my father. Captain Bill, Mary Sue. Mary Sue, Otto Roos. Okay. Um, Candy Swanson, she was an OT5 at the time. She was our tutor. And that, that's me, my sister, Suzette. We were living in Valencia while the ship went into dry dock. Okay. Relaxing. Arthur Hubbard. In Marseille in uh, 1968, Ron left the Avon River and moved to the Apollo. Okay. This is. Um, Mary Sue's mini minor, and tomorrow I will tell you a story about it. This is Ron coming aboard to live. Mary Sue. He's talking to Mary Sue. That's Ron giving an award to my mother. She'd been sent on a lot of missions. Ron and Otto. Otto was one of the first class 12 auditors. Mary Sue, Ron, Arthur, my sister Terry. She was also a Commodore's messenger. When Ron came aboard the Apollo, it was much bigger than the other ship. So, so Quinton and myself, were assigned to be messengers for Ron to find people for him and run around the ship and get things. I was 12 years old. Ему, ей было 12 лет. This is a messenger here. We had to wear this, um, we thought it was silly, hat. So we put it on when we were around Ron. And when we went on a message, we'd take it off and swing it around. <laughs> My mother, Guy Altrinham, Quentin, Julia McGuinness, she is an opera singer, and she was the Commodore's steward for a short time. Household cleaner, uh -huh. so. This is um, Ron's Chris Craft, and these are his aides. Mary Sue. Me, my sister, Queenie, the first friend. When we were in Corfu, Greece, this man yeah. would come and he would have um, danishes, like cheese or apple danishes, pastries. And he would say, apple, cheese, okay. Crew, oops. Crew from the Avon River and the Royal Scotland would meet and talk. He always said he spoke no English, only apple cheese okay. We find out he was fluent in English, writing reports and was CIA. Mm -hmm. This is the catamaran in the candy. 
It was trading ship. This was the christening of the Apollo from Royal Scotland to Apollo. This is some crew. Quentin. Quentin. Hannah, Quentin Hanna. With some Greek friends. Uh, we had children on the ship. Uh, Mary Lou, David, Lauren, my sister-in-law today. We had a man called Top from Denmark, and he used to draw drawings. We called them little things. And Talk used to, at Christmas at St. Hill, he had them hanging in different rooms at St. Hill, a little thing. That's me, Norman Starkey. He is still with Scientology, the Church of Scientology, On the, the trustee of Rum's estate. Norman. Terry, my sister. Annie Broker. Suzanne. Me, Diana. Um, yeah. We were in dry dock. Dry, we were in dry dock. So the uh, propeller. Sure. This lady took the photographs when we were stuck in Spain. There she is again. Captain Bill, my brother, Ernie Martin. Ernie Martin. Some people might know who Ernie is. No. No? No. Okay. Me, sister, brother. That's Annie Broker. She was she was with Ron when he died. He was, he was doing ship's drills. There's crew doing drills. More drills. This is a sea sled. When at anchor, we would use that to go between ship and land. These are the original class eight auditors. My mother, they were in Athens. We left Corfu, Athens, to go to America to the advanced organization of Los Angeles. See her class eight wanted to touch. She was the commanding officer of advanced organization in LA before she set up Celebrity Center. This is um, on the ship. This is Claire. She was a messenger. Four, four original messengers. Claire, Annie, my sister, and me. My sister. We used to sit in this chair, and when Ron went to sleep in his cabin down the hallway, and when he went into session, we would put up signs, quiet, LRH research. We had to keep the ship quiet. And we had a red light we would turn on and it would sh show up in different parts of the ship to tell people to be quiet. My brother in the interview. Me, it was my birthday, my gift. My sister, Arthur. Quentin, my brother, Claire, Suzette. Me, giving a message back to Ron. Oh, it's in there twice. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of book one. Tomorrow, I'll do book two. And if anyone has any questions right now, I can answer those. Uh, what was your impression as a child from LRH? Huh. Um, 
You know, I didn't know the world being a child, uh -huh. and you listen to adults, uh -huh. and to the adults, he was like a god, he knew everything, and, and I knew nothing, I was a child. Any, any more questions? Еще. Did you ever meet David Mayer? Oh, yes, yes. Да? Yeah, you did. When, you, when did you meet with David Mayo and how it was? Oh, I met David when I was 10 years old at St. Hill. But David knew my parents in Melbourne. In, uh, when um, Ron was in Melbourne doing the Melbourne Congress, David came to Melbourne from New Zealand and knew my parents from then. Yeah, and then um, here's a, a cute story. I, I knew David for many years, and when he got in trouble and he was put on the running program, he lived near me. And so when, when he started talking on the internet again, some people said, hey, do you really think this is David? So I wrote David and I said, tell me something only you and I would know. And he said, when I was in trouble doing the running program, which, what do they call it now? Um, you know, okay. around the pole. Okay, I explain. Um, he said, you would give me hot lemonade. Hot lemonade? I would make hot lemonade for him to warm him up. So that's how I knew it was him. Okay. Other questions? Okay, you mentioned that uh, Anne Broker was with LRH when he died. Yes. What exactly year it was? When? Uh, 1987, January 87. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, plus more, mm -hmm. uh, даже больше. Uh -huh. And this this book goes from 1950s mm -hmm. or through to 1970, October 1970. First one. The first book. Mm -hmm. It ends when we sail out of a storm in the Azores to Madeira. That's when this ends. And then the second book starts October 1970 and goes to October 1975 when we move off the ship and we invade America. Uh, the question from here. What is the real date of death of LRH? Uh, January 23rd, 1987. Was Otto Ross personal auditor of LRH? Yes. Ответ да. Еще вопрос важный. Как она считает искажение сейчас технологии для чего делается? Куда это идет? Okay, the question is uh, right now there are a lot of changes of technology в церкви, да? In the church. For what purpose it's done? You know, I am not there, but I have heard that they had some copyright issues, and so they need to make a certain amount of changes in order to re-copyright. But I, I don't know, because I'm not there. When uh, did you see LRH last time? I saw him last in December 1979. I was with him and I went on vacation to Australia. When I came back, there was a lot of problems and then he then disappeared with Annie and Pat. The problems were legal. There was a lot of people suing Scientology, suing Ron, and he didn't want to spend his time in a courtroom. So he left and the instructions were to get him an all clear, meaning no more legal network, so he could come back and work with everybody. But it never happened. It was tough discipline on the ship. 
and what were punishments? Yes, it was. <clears throat> On the ship we had, um, we had Scientology conditions, non-existence, liability, doubt, enemy. <laughs> and with those, you wore a rag for liability, or a chain for doubt, a black mark for treason. Like what was for liability? A rag. Right. A rag uh, around the arm. Uh, uh, chain for doubt. Chain where? Chain around the wrist. Yes. A black mark for treason. Cool. <laughs> um, during the original class eight course, if the auditor did not get a good, well done or very well done session, they were thrown overboard. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> And many times we would work all night, no sleep or no liberty. We had a chain locker. Um, really bad people were, or, or bad people were put in the chain locker. At 13, I was thrown overboard. What for? You know, I don't remember. <laughs> but I had to. We had our run had a contest with the four messengers. We had to study the Scientology dictionary. Mm -hmm. I was the youngest. Mm -hmm. Whoever came in last mm -hmm. had to spend the night in the crow's nest. Uh, who was last and what? What was the... I was last. No, what was the competition? What? Ah, okay. We had to learn verbatim. A equals A equals oh, oh. So I, I climbed up the mast. So does that answer your question? Uh, how David Miscavige arrived there? Like, wait. David Miscavige was never on the ship. He arrived in April 1976 in Clearwater. Yeah. He did not spend a lot of time with Ron. Yes. Uh, he think you like your experience, life experience, knowledge. You got a lot of from LRH. What is the most valuable for you? Most valuable to me is to confront and keep on going. Don't let life get the better of you. What? Don't let life get the better of you. Okay. <laughs> yes. If we talk not about technology, but like you, like human being, mm -hmm. what your impression from LRH and from Bill Robertson? They were, where they differ from other people? Where they differ one from another? Like what your personal impression? Um, we're all human. Everyone is different. Some have more abilities than others. And some believe in themselves more. And that helps push you forward. And that's what Captain Bill did. He was a very... He knew what he was doing. He, and, and Ron was the same way. I, I could ask him anything, and he always had an answer. Whether he gave me the right answer or not, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I you give an auditing? You audit people? No, no. When I was um, eleven, I did the Dianetics course, and as a messenger, there were times Ron would tell me to put someone on the cans and ask them questions or do work for me. I would report back to him, and he would tell me what to do next. Any more questions? Yes. How many children was in Sea Org and what happened? Why no children in Sea Org? Um, you know, on the ship, parents came with their children. But a ship is not a place for a nursery. Mm -hmm. It's not safe. So anyone with children under 12 had to leave. They went to the land offices. And so on the ship, 12 years old and up, 12 to 16, there was maybe 
at first five five of us, and then more more came maybe to maybe fifteen, and then when we moved to shore, um, a lot of women got pregnant. I was still in nursery, and the nursery got bigger and bigger, and then the rules with one hour a day with your child, which is not a good way to raise your children. And, and parents would be sent on mission, someone else would look after their children. Uh, it was very abusive for the children. Yeah, I was, when I left, I was pregnant, and I was not gonna raise my child the way I was raised and how I saw the others being raised. So I left, and I have a 28-year-old son. Yes. You know what really happened to Ron's children? The first pictures you've shown, there was a picture of Nibs, his oldest yes. son. There no. was a girl and Katie. said Katie. Katie Gillespie. Daughter. That was his daughter. The daughter of Nibs. No, the daughter of Ron. Never heard of her. Ron's first wife, Polly. S second, second, second. Ron's first wife, Polly. Nibs, L. Ron Hubbard Jr. and Katie Gillespie. Both have passed away. Second wife, Sarah, he had a daughter, Alexis, who he, when she was a baby, he said she was his, and she had red hair. When she got older, he said it wasn't his. I, I watched him write a letter to her saying she was not his. I guess we need DNA to find out. DNA? Then with Mary Sue, with Mary Sue, he had Diana, Quinton, Suzette, Arthur. Diana is still in the seal. She left and she came back. Quinton died. Suzette lives in, and Arthur both live in Los Angeles. And they are still, they are not Scientologists, but they are still connected to Scientology organization because of their trust from their mother. Mary Sue left money for them. Uh huh. And then Suzette had three children, and Diana had one. And uh, Nibs is the same guy who later changed his last name to DeWolf. DeWolf, yes. And there's a, there's a guy on YouTube, you know the Jamie DeWolf. Yeah. His grandson. Mm. Any other questions? Uh, can you tell anything about Mary Sue? Um, Mary Sue, she was very, um, very strong personality. She headed up the Guardian's office. Anybody attacking Scientology, she ran the Guardian's office to get rid of those attacks. You did not want to cross her. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she was also nice. She was my legal guardian. Because when I was 12, my mother kept me to send on mission and set up celebrity centers. So she was, my mother was in Los Angeles while I was on the ship for eight years. I have a question. Yes. Uh, you you uh, told it in this interview to Ron Miskevich. And there is, some people ask, like, was Ron changed or not? It's another person. And you said that when in 1973 he came back, to ship, uh, he knew people, he yes. knew ship. Okay. okay. Right. Yes. There is someone who started a rumor that Ron was switched in 1972. Now, in 1972, in September, we moved ashore and lived in Morocco, and the ship sailed to Lisbon. So we were in Morocco for three months. And while there, we were we had auditors in Rabat. Okay. Set checking the military to find out who was behind the coup on the King of Morocco. It blew up in our face because the main man behind the coup saw his name on the list. So Ron left Tangier, went back to Lisbon and then went to New York. You told him about the phone call. Yeah. Okay. So the ship was in dry dock 
in Lisbon, so he had nowhere to live. And he went to New York. We then, we all, one week, we all went back to Lisbon, never went back to Morocco again. Too dangerous. Too? Too dangerous. We then, on the ship, we cleaned the ship from top to bottom, and then Ron came back. When he came back, I was on deck as the messenger. He got out of the taxi, came aboard, went up towards his cabin, told me, get Mary Sue, went to his cabin, showered, Mary Sue cut his hair, because it was down here. Then he came out and said hello to people. He knew his way around, he remembered everybody. He was not switched. Okay. А, интересно узнать, вот центр знаменитостей, что там происходило? I was not there, I was on the ship. So everything I hear from other people, but she started at um, AOLA, she would keep files on different celebrities. She wrote Ron asking to set up an organization to deal with the celebrities. And that is how she started it. And then she built it um, up to over 200 staff. She started an old supermarket, no carpets. They would raid dumpsters for patches of carpet. Yeah. And the carpet yeah. patched. Yes. And they would sew it together mm -hmm. to make a form. Okay. Tomorrow I'll show you a picture of the patched carpet. But she, she started it with, with no help. And she just got people to come and work for her. A lot of them volunteered. She was not. She was not a person about the money for Scientology. If someone needed Scientology, she gave it to them. If they couldn't, even if they couldn't afford it. One of her celebrities had been on tour with Michael Jackson, and when he came back, he wanted help. She ordered that. They get him in session to help him, and someone came back and said he has no money on account. She said, I didn't ask if he had money on account. I said, get him in session. That's how she ran Celebrity Center. It was to help people. Okay? Yeah. Uh, you was in Seward, you did all the stuff. Why you didn't came back to Seward? Because the baby was still. Ah, you told me, like he was pregnant and you yes. left. Yes, yes. And his question: Why you didn't came? Why you didn't came back to Seward? Because it's no longer the same, and I I can help people more. I help a lot of people who have left. I did 22 years of abuse in the sale. Uh, I like my freedom. Yes? No. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Ну, пожалуй, опять. Интересно узнать, как твои родители попали в Сентолог. Что было первым? Они книжку встретили. Что? Как? How your parents came to Scientology? Huh, okay. My mother was a kindergarten teacher. She had an assistant who got into Dianetics. They kept trying to talk to my father to get him interested. He wanted nothing to do with it. Then they told, she told him about past lives. And that got him in. Then he went to classes on self-analysis. And he found his certainty and abilities increasing from self-analysis. They moved to, from Brisbane to Sydney to get more Scientology. But he wasn't making enough money to support the family. So he moved to a little town where I was born and ran a newspaper ad promoting lectures by himself. He got eight people, and by the end of the week, he had one person left on his class, on his course. Seven nights. One person left. Yeah, they all moved, no. except for one. No. No. That one person is still a friend today. Then he just kept going. 
and then moved to Melbourne and set up the mission, a Scientology mission. And as Ron wrote things, it would arrive in the mail and they would practice. They really got into the past lives. And when I was five, my mother told me about past lives. I went to school and we had show and tell. Show and tell. That's where you get up in front of the class and you tell them something. <laughs> so five years old, I told the class, my mother came to Australia with Captain Cook. Captain Cook discovered Australia in 1770. The teacher couldn't get me back to my seat fast enough and sent me home with a note that I had a wild imagination. <laughs> so that's, that's what we did, how they got into Scientology. Any more questions? Yes. А как вам родители рассказали? When and how your parents started to talk to you about Scientology? How you got it first time? Our mission was in our house. <laughs> so I walk into the living room and there's a session for people doing TRs or doing drills, talking to a doll, asking an ashtray to stand up. So I, I just grew up with it. It was normal. Yep. Any more questions? Yes. <coughs> Uh, where you are on I did all my T7 and I did not finish um, knots. I do much more than that. You did it, all the stuff you did in CO? In the CO, yes. Yeah. Uh, so you was getting auditing uh, while Ron was? Yes, yes, he would CS my phones. Mm -hmm. Wow. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> Сейчас Scientology uh, каким-то образом. No. No? Okay. No. I live in Las Vegas. My sister lives in Las Vegas and my brother in California. And my father in Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, any more questions? Еще вопросы? Перерыв. Okay, I was I hope oh, yes. Последний может быть вопрос. Скажи, вот то, что ты делаешь сейчас. The question is, you are, do, you are writing books. Yes. You come here, you come to other places, you tell people about all this stuff. Yes. What is it, why you do it, what is your purpose, why you, why you need it, what is it? Because I'm one of the few people left that knows the truth. Mm -hmm. And I've seen um, Church of Scientology twist the truth. I just want the real truth known. You know, as I showed, people get photoshopped out of photographs. Yeah. Okay. If we talk about history of Scientology, uh, how, let's say, how, to what degree they changed it? I mean, church. It's like something, a bit, a lot. Well, you know, um, Larry Wright wrote a book called um, Clear, Going Clear. Larry Wright. Larry Wright? Yeah, he's a reporter who wrote a book. And Larry interviewed a lot of people. Scientology, Church of Scientology, did a website basically saying that these things were correct and didn't happen. And when I read those, I got angry because they were trying to change history. And one in particular, there's a um, Norman Starkey as captain said something didn't happen, and I know it happened. Mm -hmm. And it's in my book too. And that's where I was like, no, I've got to speak up and say something. Norman Starkey, yes. he said that something that was said in the book going clear did not happen, ah. and it did. Okay. There's also people who are being mistreated in the seal, and even Scientologists are being controlled, when that is not what Scientology was supposed to be. You're supposed to have to think for yourself, you know, be ethical, think for yourself, help other people, um, make them better. It was not about squashing people. <coughs> squashing. squashing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Oh. 